So the most important or the commonly asked question in the viva defines circulatory shock. So what is shock? Shock is a syndrome which means it is a group of symptoms or signs occurring together. So the circulatory shock is a syndrome of inadequate tissue perfusion due to problems in the circulatory system which means that the tissues are not receiving enough of blood not adequate amount of oxygen or the nutrients in simple words we can say that circulatory shock is when the blood pressure falls so low that adequate blood flow to the tissues can no longer be maintained so we said it is a syndrome that is it is a collection of various signs and symptoms so what are those signs and symptoms the first one is cold pale skin clammy why the skin is cold and pale that means the cutaneous blood flow is reduced so in the early stages of shock the auto regulatory mechanisms shunt the blood preferentially to the brain to the heart to the adrenal so flow to less critical organ is less patient has cool extremities decreased urine output okay so the cutaneous blood flow is less that means cold skin is pale but it is clammy there is a lot of moisture excessive sweating this is because of epinephrine release sympathetic stimulation for example a student is caught is in, in a viva and he was cheating when the teacher pointed out the student is sweating all over this is sympathetic stimulation right rapid pulse tachycardia that is a compensatory mechanism to restore the blood volume thready and weak pulse if you try to palpate the pulse of the patient with your fingers you'll observe that it is very low volume it is as feeble as a thread very weak as the blood volume is reduced maybe blood flow is less or the plasma loss is there so because of that hypotension is there hypotension blood pressure less than 90 by 60 kidneys are receiving less blood flow so decreased urine output because of reduced gfr okay oliguria less urine or maybe in late stages no urine when the brain receives less blood flow there will be decreased level of consciousness in the late stages of shock the types the types include hypovolemic shock which is also known as cold shock the body is cold the body is pale and clammy this is cold shock distributive shock also known as vasogenic shock or neurogenic shock okay so distributive is a type of warm shock in contrast to hypovolemic there is vasodilatation and increased blood flow here so you can get a question on cold shock versus warm shock cold is hypovolemic distributive is the warm shock third type cardiogenic some problem in the heart obstructive shock heart is normal blood volume is normal vessel tone is normal but there is an obstruction to the forward flow of the blood so all these are the types of circulatory shock in this video we will discuss hypovolemic shock hypo means less volume means volume so the blood volume is less fall in blood volume this fall in blood volume may be either directly through severe hemorrhage that means a lot of blood loss for example in traumatic shock when there is injury to the tissues muscles or the bones in roadside accidents or war casualties or there is surgical shock at the time of the surgery the patient bled a lot maybe bt ct bleeding time clotting time was prolonged or some artery got ruptured intraoperatively or there may be plasma loss not the blood entire loss only the fluid portion of the blood is gone when does this happen in these situations severe diarrhea extensive urinary loss extensive sweating severe burn patients in burn patients in severe cases when the dermis and epidermis both are gone so the water mechanism will they keep on evaporating from the skin okay so a lot of water is being lost so the blood volume will be reduced so whether it is hemorrhagic blood loss or plasma loss both can result in hypovolemic shock so what is the main pathophysiology or the mechanisms that are governing the development of hypovolemic shock what will happen when the blood volume is reduced the pressure with which the blood is filled in the circulation 
will be reduced. That means decreased filling pressure of the circulation. This is the average of the arterial and the venous pressure. So if the filling pressure is reduced, less blood flow will be returned to the right atrium. That means reduced venous return. As a result, reduced end diastolic volume, EDV. Preload is reduced. So the amount of the blood that is pumped by heart per beat stroke volume will be reduced. Consequently, the amount of blood that is received or depumped by the heart per minute cardiac output will be reduced. So what will happen to the tissues? They are not getting enough of the perfusion, reduced tissue perfusion. So tissues have no other option. They have to switch to anaerobic glycolysis. They have to switch to anaerobic metabolism due to which the lactic acid is produced and this will depress the myocardium further and deteriorate the shock. Also, the lactic acid reduces the responsiveness of the blood vessels to catecholamines. So, this is the development of hypovolemic shock in the patient which may be due to blood loss or plasma loss. So a person was quite motivated to give blood because of various blood campaigns and the advertisements that are shown in the media channels and they're saying that give blood, okay, donate blood and give life. So a person comes to you and as a healthcare professional, you have to allay his apprehension and anxieties. He's asking you that, will it harm my body if I donate blood? How much amount of blood I can donate that I'll be normal? Will I develop fainting or will I have headache, giddiness or will I not feel well after giving blood? Okay, so will blood donation cause hypovolemic shock? The answer is clear cut, no. Why? Because the blood volume that you donate is just 10% of the total or even less than that you're donating. So this much amount of blood volume is well tolerated by the body. The mean arterial pressure will not change. So what is the blood volume that is not tolerated by the body? 30%, more than 30% of the blood volume not tolerated. It is severe shock. So more than 20%, 20 to 30, that is when the shock stages start developing. You get re First is the reversible shock, then progressive shock, and then irreversible refractory stage of shock. So more than 30% is the severe stage. So this one, blood donation, the normal one, not a problem. So far, we have talked about the hemorrhagic shock, which means the blood loss okay, or the plasma loss. Hmm? Now we are talking about the other types of the hypovolemic shock. For example, the traumatic shock when roadside accidents occur, surgical shock during surgery, the blood is being lost or the burn shock when the plasma is being exudated out of the body. So we'll discuss these one by one. All of them are hypovolemic shock. In traumatic shock, in roadside accidents or battle casualties, even the muscles and the bone, they may get damaged and there's an accumulation of the blood in the muscle. Large muscles like quadriceps and gluteus, they can accommodate a large volume of blood and you don't know that blood has been accumulated there. They are doing it so well. Okay, Smaller muscles, they cannot accommodate that much blood. So maybe the bleeding is internal. It's not always that in shock, you can always see the blood coming out. Maybe internal hemorrhage is there. So here there was bleeding into the injured muscle. How the shock will develop? Because when there is bleeding into the injured muscle, the blood vessels of the muscle that was supplying the muscle, they are compressed. So they are not supplying properly. So the blood flow to the injured muscle is compromised. This is traumatic shock. Myoglobin that is released from the broken, damaged injured muscle will block the renal tubule and cause acute renal failure so the kidney will have less gfr less blood flow oliguria and urea okay so the shock stages now what will be the treatment in such a patient will try to auto transfuse this blood because a lot of blood that belongs to the person of course it is his blood and you can just take the blood out of the muscle and put it back inside the blood vessel this is auto transfusion and we expect the person to get better when you auto transfuse the blood but when he was in a stage of ischemia when the muscles were ischemic blood flow was reduced at that time the muscles develop certain inflammatory reaction or oxidative stress due to which muscle cannot recover even when you reperfuse it okay so the removal of the blood from the injured muscle relieves the pressure plus your auto transfusing also that means you are giving reperfusion but still the person is not fine. So this is called as reperfusion induced muscle injury. 
So when the blood flow is re-established, what happens? There is conversion of tissue xanthine dehydrogenase to xanthine oxidase. Please remember this thing. And there will be generation of free oxygen radicals, hydrogen peroxide that will further damage the tissue. So this is called as reperfusion induced injuries. And in the reperfused areas, we have accumulation of calcium, we have reactive oxygen species and inflammatory changes. So everything is causing tissue damage. Treatment is allopurinol. This is a drug that is given for gout and arthritis type of disease. So its mechanism here in shock is that it is a xanthine oxidase inhibitor that reduces the severity of reperfusion induced injury. So you can use it as a line of treatment. Surgical shock, you already know that this is seen in surgical procedures. That means intraoperatively or postoperatively, some artery, it ruptured and a lot of blood started coming out. Or maybe the bleeding time or clotting time of the person was so much prolonged that bleeding could not be stopped. It may be due to internal hemorrhage, internal into the tissue that you cannot see from outside or external hemorrhage, the blood is coming out, you can see. So that would result in hypovolemia, burn shock and severe degree of burn. Epidem is gone, derm is gone, so the protection, the skin barrier gone. So all the plasma will keep on exudating, coming out. This is the fluid loss. And the plasma that is lost is not containing any RBCs. In fact, the only type of shock which is associated with hemoconcentration or high hematocrit, that is burn shock. Why? Because the burnt area is weeping a plasma protein rich fluid through the capillary walls and RBCs are not moving out. So what would be the treatment? How would you treat this case? Position of the patient in hypovolemia. First essential step is you can just place the patient with head lower than the feet. That will help in promoting the venous return and increase the cardiac output. So that is known as trendlin berg position. Replacement therapy, of course, yes, you can try to replace. So what replacements you'll give? If shock is due to hemorrhage, you can transfuse whole blood. Shock is due to plasma loss, administer plasma. If shock is due to dehydration, diarrhea, then appropriate electrolyte solution has to be given. If you don't have whole blood, you can try for plasma and plasma substitutes like dextrins. Okay, And is there any role of the sympathomimetic? Not in this one hypovolemic, but yes, in neurogenic anaphylactic that we'll discuss in the next video. There we give a lot of sympathomimetic. But some books, some studies, they do claim that dopamine is the drug of choice in the traumatic shock because it produces renal vasodilatation and that will maintain the kidney function. So in a way, it will be beneficial. So yes, dopamine can be tried. Glucocorticoids. Yes, they can be given in severe stages of shock because they will increase the strength of heart. Okay, and they will stabilize the lysosomes in the tissues. So the body should not be covered in hypovolemic shock. It is cold shock. So you feel the person is so cold. So bring the blankets and put it on the patient. But no, this is wrong. You don't have to cover the body in blankets. The skin is cold, but don't cover it in blanket. Leave it as such. Okay. Because if you cover it in blanket, the increased skin temperature will cause cutaneous vasodilatation and further decrease the blood pressure and precipitate the shock, worsen the condition. Keep the body exposed. So for the next video, you can just wait and the other types of shock will be discussed there. So far, we just discussed the hypovolemic type, the hemorrhagic or the plasma loss, burn shock. Traumatic shock, surgical shock, other types of shock will be discussed later on. So thank you so much. Hope this video was useful to you. Stay connected.